did this night go the way it hoped, you had hoped it would? No, oh, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you when, you know, later when I see the memes. <laughs> Self-help author, spiritual advisor, Marianne Williamson, admitting she may be, may be one of the more meme-worthy candidates of the 2020 presidential race. She's, she's smiling. But today, the Internet is paying sincere attention to her on her comments on racial inequality, which became one of the most standout moments of the entire debate last night. We need to recognize that when it comes to the economic gap between blacks and whites in America, it does come from a great injustice that has never been dealt with. That great injustice has had to do with the fact that there was 250 years of slavery followed by another 100, 100 years of domestic terrorism. It's $500 billion, 200 to $500 billion payment of a debt that is owed. That is what reparations is. I believe that anything less than $100 billion is is an insult, and I believe that 200 to 500 billion is, is politically feasible. We need to say it like it is. It's bigger than Flint. It's all over this country. It's particularly people of color. It's particularly people who do not have the money to fight back. And if the Democrats don't start saying it, then why would those people feel that they're there for us? And if those people don't feel it, they won't vote for us, and Donald Trump will win. Mm. That enthusiasm earned Williamson a coveted superlative for any political newcomer, most Googled candidate of the night. I've actually been impressed with some of the things that Marianne Williamson has been saying. This is my first opportunity to really hear what she's had to say on certain issues. And while there's not a lot of specifics, she's uh, definitely, I think, speaking to uh, the values and the morals of the country. Marianne Williamson, tonight, like, yeah, like, I know she was Oprah's, you know, like, spiritual advisor, and um, I really appreciate just really a, a candidate talking about dark forces at work. I was like, whoa, like she actually said that in a debate. <laughs> Marianne Williamson is with me now. A pleasure to meet you. Thank you. It's How are you feeling you. day after? You well, feeling, feeling good? I could use more sleep. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of a lot of you guys yeah. could. I mean, on on your response on reparations, let me just read this for you, because the, the, the Duke professor who is largely leading the, the, the research on slavery reparations, uh, Sandy Darity, <coughs> said that you were, quote, extremely strong. I mean, there you were up on a stage, just happened to be a stage full of white candidates. Why do you think you were the one that really stood out on the answer on race? Because of what I said, because I feel strongly that we have to have a deeper conversation than the political establishment is having about a lot of issues, and race is one of them. Sandy but it Darity. Was how you said it? <clears throat> I think it was how I said it. Well, I think that once you have the what you're saying, the passion comes along with it. Because if you're taking a deep look at at, at uh, racial issues in the United States, and you're looking at the history, you're looking at 250 years of slavery, followed by another hundred years of institutionalized violence against black people, 350 years of institutionalized violence, which is longer than this country has been in existence, passion kind of comes along pretty naturally once you really look at the facts and put the dots together. So when I was listening to you last night <clears throat> and you were trying to explain some of how you arrived at the numbers, right? Yes. You said it should be in the trillion but maybe it should be at least 100 billion, but perhaps somewhere between 200 and 500 billion. How, what wasn't addressed last night is how you pay for that. Oh, well, of course, they say that about any progressive issue, don't they? they you know, we, but we've... it's a fair question, because that's a lot of money. How, how, do, how do you pay for it? Well, first of all, $2 trillion, $2 trillion went into the tax cut, as we know. 83 cents of every dollar went to the very richest Americans. And the whole thing was the ruse of it being an economic stimulant. It actually wasn't. I think something like what we're talking about now, reparations for slavery, among other things, would be an economic stimulant. Because anything that helps people thrive, anything that is, be to me, the idea of a reparations council, and by the way, Professor Darity is someone who has taught me a lot and has informed me, and I think that he would be a perfect person to be on such a council. Uh, my idea is that the money would be dispersed over a period of 20 years. And people such as Professor Darity, such as those on this council, would make those decisions. The, the stipulation on the part of the U.S. government would be for projects of economic and educational renewal. By definition, projects of economic and educational renewal goes into the lives of people. It increases their educational potential, which increases uh, financial potential. Anything which helps people thrive is a is money placed into the economy. So when you say, I mean, the whole economic idea. You have to understand why people are saying, okay, that it sounds <coughs> wonderful and it felt authentic, <coughs> but where does she poof? 
get this get this money from? Well, it sounds like okay, maybe so you don't entirely we, know. No, well, I don't even think it's about that. You repeal the 2017 tax cut. You put back in the middle class tax cut. You make it that the United States government, in fact, can negotiate with Big Pharma. You have the $15 an hour minimum wage. You have the 3% tax on billionaires. You have the 2% tax on 50 million or more. You start having some cash on hand. Hmm. And also you remember that this is where money comes from. The more you educate a child and the more you unleash the spirit of people by uncapping their dreams, the more creative people can become, the more productive people come, the better the employers will be, the better empl employers they'll be, the more they'll be entrepreneurial. If you want money, help people live their dreams because people want to do amazing things that in fact create money. I need to keep talking to you. Will you stick by through really a commercial break? To. I have a Thank few you. more questions for you. Marianne Thank Williamson, you. live here in Detroit after her big debate performance last night. We will be right back. You're watching CNN. Welcome back. We are live in Detroit. I'm Brooke Baldwin. Sitting next to me, Marianne Williamson, uh, fresh off her debate last night. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you. So um, let's talk next just about health care, right? So on health care, you mentioned you can see both sides. Well, I'm... Well, well, what's your plan? <clears throat> I want Medicare for all. I definitely want Medicare for all. Do you want a private option? I want a, I want a, I want a public option. Public option, rather. Yes, private I want insurance. a public option. Bernie's plan says there's a four-year transitional period. Congresswoman Chaya Paul's plan says a two-year period. Kamala but, Harris says 10. Yeah. What? To me, that's too long. Too long. The only issue that's still a sticking point for me and where I'm still processing in my heart has to do with private insurance. Not because I'm a fan of the, of the health insurance companies at all, but because, as a friend of mine said, Americans want to put mustard on their hot dog if they want to put mustard on their hot dog. Now, I know that my very progressive friends... Are you going like, to give people the, uh, the option to put mustard on the hot dog? Well, that's, what, that's keeping, what you're figuring out. Well, that's what I'm figuring out because that's what keeping your private insurance, if you want to, allows you to do. Now, I know my very progressive friends, even now, I'm sure I'll get all kinds of texts. No! Um, but I think I have to be honest and say that on that issue, I'm still a little... I get that, uh, I even get the numbers, I even get economically it's better if we completely get rid of private health insurance. But I'm just... It sounds like this and this. Well, I, but I don't, in that, in that case, both, you know, I think it's okay sometimes for a politician to say, I'm still thinking about that one. Would you raise taxes on the middle class? No, I want to put the it? middle class tax cut back in. I want to repeal the 2017 tax cut, put the middle class well, tax cut back discussed in. discussed a second ago. Can I ask you about Oprah? Because she was your, <clears throat> you were her spiritual advisor. I read a quote this morning that, that she said she'd never been more personally moved by uh, a return to love, which was your 1992 self-help book. Can you just share what your relationship with Oprah is like? And if she's someone who people hoped would run for president, you're running for president. Has she offered up any words of wisdom to you? First of all, no, I can't share with you what my relationship with her is about. And I'm sure you can appreciate as a person in the in the public in public. People life are yourself. curious. I had to ask. Yeah. Part of being your friend is they're not going to say things. Of course. But I think also I, I, I don't think of myself as her spiritual advisor. How would you characterize it? Well, I'm very grateful because she has supported my books at various times. And I'm grateful for every word she's ever spoken to me and every uh, conversation I've ever had with her. But I. I, I, she's never said to me, you're my spiritual advisor. I, you know, she's a spiritual is she advisor. Advi is she advising you at all and, and this taking no. all of this on? No, 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 no. Oprah, no, no, absolutely not. And Oprah is a very serious woman, and I would never wish to exploit whatever that contact is in any way, shape, or form. I had read that Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, they'd invited you to Camp David back in 1994, and certainly she, this is something she is familiar with. Have you been in touch with her at all about... No, no. I certainly admire her greatly. Okay. Um, the, the folks, just quickly, you know, some people, obviously, you were the <coughs> most Googled. Um, well, except Montana. What's with Montana? <laughs> Everybody's I like, who's Steve Bullock? Steve Bullock. Steve Bullock. Um, you, 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 you had said, you had said <coughs> whoever wins needs to not just water the leaves, yes. but water the roots of our democracy. After last night, do you think the Democrats are in a better position or a worse position to beat Donald Trump? Well, I hope that my voice has contributed something to the conversation already, and I believe that it has. The very fact that you just mentioned that line. I think that people understand that we have to go deeper. The issue is, are they prepared to go deeper? That's, that's a very different question. I think that, that there's an, you know, I think, I believe that when it comes to political establishments, sometimes people are more interested in their club than in their cause. 
And I think so. What does that mean for Democrats beating Donald what Trump? What it means that there's an entrenched way of seeing and doing things that did not work last time, and it will not work this time unless unless people are open to some ideas that maybe aren't the ideas that they're already carrying. Mm -hmm. and, and to be honest, when it comes to my candidacy, it's going to take a little bit more than just oh, we need to listen to her. I have spent 35 years learning how to discern what's really going on inside people and learning how to articulate what those things are in a way that helps them change. That's a skill set in and of itself. You can't just paste it on. You can't, you know, if you, all you want is my advice, read my books. No, and I think your moment last night, I think, spoke for itself. Marianne Williamson. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Good luck. Good luck to you. Any moment now, former Vice President Joe Biden is set to take a tour of the debate stage.